All right, what up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Another episode of the Crypto Breakdown. I am your host, Ryan Meta. Today, we're going to talk about explaining how shorts and longs work over on Bybit Exchange. And of course, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not a financial investor and I never advise you to invest in crypto in any way, shape, or form. Thank you. So you can see over here on Bybit, I have a full step-by-step -step beginner tutorial playlist. I'm going to leave links to that. They'll be down in the description of this video. And they also have a $20 sign-up bonus plus, depending on your bankroll right now until August 15th, they have up to a $1,000 deposit bonus. So if you're a baller, you got two Bitcoin. If you're able to deposit two Bitcoin, you get a thousand bucks. Um, depending on how much you deposit, the more you deposit, the more you're actually gonna make. And they also have a testnet exchange, which is one of my favorite things about Bybit. So if you click on my Bybit beginner tutorial, you'll see everything you need to know about trading on Bybit. I've pretty much made step-by-step -step tutorials, but a lot of people are asking me to go over the difference between longing and shorting. The best part about Bybit is they have this, what's called testnet. So you can download, you gotta sign up for regular Bybit, and then you sign up for testnet, and they actually have a dummy exchange. So right here, this is exactly what Bybit testnet looks like. So you can actually practice leverage trading you can practice hodling. You can practice everything you need to know about trading crypto. You can learn practicing for free without risking any of your money. And that's what I think is the most important and why I like Bybit the most. Now over here on the right hand side of the screen, you will see two different things of limit, market and conditional. Market means that you are going to get in at this exact price point right here. So you see two different prices here, 143.17 and 143.28. The orange price is the market price. The green price is the actual current price. So it's going to put you in at the market price if you market in. Now, when you limit in, you tell it where you want price to go. So if I wanted to limit into Matic at $1.43, I would put in $1.43. Down below is your contract size up top you have your leverages so you have long versus short you can adjust your leverages on both of those so let me get over on bybit testnet and show you guys we'll pick any coin that i don't have a long position on already for example dogecoin let's say i wanted to take out a long on doge come over here on doge and doge is at 27.98 cents so maybe i want to take a long on doge if doge comes down to 27.88 i come over here i put in 2788 the quantity of doge based off of the leverage you use if you put one doge here you can see one doge equals one tenth of a penny i just type in a bunch of ones until i kind of get a spot where i'm comfortable so right now 11,111 contracts of doge equals 128 dollars because my long leverage right now is 25x if i put that down to no leverage right just one and one and i confirm that now if i come over here and I type in one contract a Doge, one contract equals 2788. Does that make sense? So when you go up and you increase your, your leverage, it just decreases the position size by that amount. So if I go up to 2X, say Doge was 30 cents. If I went up to, two, uh, to 2X, one contract a Doge would be 15 cents. Does that make sense? It's kind of hard to explain, but we're talking about the difference between going long and short. Over here, if I just mark it in with a long and I just type in the amount of contracts I wanna buy, you can see right here in these boxes, this is all you can risk losing. So when you're talking about going long, when you're talking about going long on a coin, you're betting on the coin to go up. So if I'm taking out a long and say Bitcoin is at right at $47,000, if I take a long, that means I am betting on the price of Bitcoin to go up. So if I enter a long trade at 47,000 and price goes up to 49,500, I would make 5% on that trade because the price went from 47,000 to 49,500, 5%. And of course I'm rounding just to keep things extremely simple. If I'm betting short and the price of Bitcoin is at 47,000, if I open up a short at 47,000 and price goes down to $46,750, I make 5% because the price of that coin had went down by 5% from the time I entered that short to the time I closed that short. Price went down 5%, I make 5% on that trade. Now, if you're talking about adding leverage into the equation, if I go long on Bitcoin at 47,000 and I have 10X leverage on that trade, if I took a long position on Bitcoin at 47,000 
and I use 10x leverage and the coin goes up by 5%, your leverage times percentage equals how much you gain. So if I'm using 10x on a long position and price goes from 47,000 to 49,500, I make 50% profit. Same thing if I were to short it, if I were to short it, same trade. If I shorted it at 47K, price goes down to 44,750, I actually make. So on Doge, if we wanted to does anybody not understand this? That's what I want to know. Is there anything I can show you guys here on the test net over here that'll help you guys understand how this works? Everybody thinks that like I, at least for me, I thought that when I was shorting something, I had to borrow shares and I had to pay those shares back at a later date and I had to pay interest on those shares. It's not the case. You're literally just betting on it. It would be similar to, I try to explain it like, Think about like if you're talking about a sports team, right? Think of longing as the team winning. Think about shorting as the team losing. So when you're betting on a coin to go up, you're betting on the coin to win. When your coin is going, when you're going short on the coin, you're betting on the coin to lose. So like when I, if I wanted to go long on Doge and say I wanted to market in on a long on Doge, if I have cross margin on, that means I'm gonna I'm willing to lose like I have seven thousand five hundred dollars in my balance over here. If I lose, it's going to lose it'll drain all seven thousand five hundred dollars out of that balance. If I use isolated, it's only going to allow me to lose whatever's in this box right here. If I market into something, I'm gonna be a taker, I'm gonna pay a fee. So if I limit into Doge at say twenty seven eighty eight, I'm only going to lose what I have risked in this box right here. So if I use 10X leverage right now and I open this long position, it put a limit order in down here at 2788. So if I scroll this up, I can just drag this up. I like to drag mine up until it gets close. So if Doge pulls back right here and goes down to right there, boom. Now it just put me in that trade as a, like you can see right here, I just got paid 0 0.07 cents to open that trade. That is my fee right there, 0 0.07 cents. So now I have a long open and you can see it automatically put me in right there at that position. Now I can also add a stop loss to that trade. So anytime I'm trading on any exchange, I'm always doing my TA over on TradingView. I also have affiliate links where you get, I think a 30 day free trial. So on this Doge trade setup, it was calling for a ABC push to the downside. I said, if Doge can break back up above 2790. I would be bullish on it. If we start breaking back down below, I'll be bearish on it. So I'm trying to figure out on that long position what I want my stop loss to be at. Doge is one of those coins that's really hard to, in my personal opinion, decide if you where you want to put your stop at because you need to have such a big stop because the coin's so volatile. I'm going in at a position where it's it's 50 50. I definitely think I can get 5% out of it if it goes up. I would think that right now I would need to have a stop loss at 2734 at the very least to survive that, which is much more than I want to have on it. I would like to have a 1% or a 0.75%, but I don't still think it's I just don't think it's possible. My entry point was 2788, but then I kind of moved up that little slider. 2794 is my entry point on Doge. So I'll say I'll stay bullish on Doge with a I'm just going to do a 0.75. If I lose it, I lose it. It is what it is. 2770. So I come over here, add a stop loss. And what's nice is it shows you like on that trade, if I lose that trade and it hits my stop loss, I'm losing $2.66. Big deal, right? Confirm stop loss in place. Now, if I can ride it up, I'll ride it up. If I can't, it'll take me out. No big deal. It's only two bucks. Anytime you're trading and you're doing limit buy orders, you always want to make sure that you are a maker and not a taker you always want to make sure that they don't put that trade in as a as a taker because you're going to have to actually pay more fees on that so always click and make sure you have post checked and now we got ourselves in a nice good long position on doge and it's ripping up let's f and go baby now i'll show you guys one more now if i mark it in to that trade say i wanted to do the same thing or say i wanted to double down now that doge is ripping i think it's got potential to run up I could do something very stupid, come over here and uh, let's get it up to a hundred bucks. And now if I mark it in and open up a long trade, I'm going to automatically be a taker and it's going to automatically fill all those positions on Doge. And now you can see I have a $147 long. 
price is coming down i'm down a dollar fifty now if i lose that trade i'm gonna lose 14.94 and you can see where it puts your stop loss right here on the left hand side same thing on my stop loss if i wanted to move that up to say a little bit less than you know 0.75 i can just move my stop loss up as well and you can see when i entered that when i marketed in and added more to that trade it moved my entry price on doge up from was it right the first time 95 to now it's up to 98. anytime i'm taking random trades like that that I, i'm at risk of getting you know liquidated or not liquidated or stomped out once i get up ahead of that trade enough what i'll do is i'll come over here and i'll just drag my stop loss up into the profits so if doge can actually break out and run up quite a bit more i'll just move my stop loss up here down to 28 cents and I'll let it roll and see if we can ride one out on Doge as well. They also have a swap trade feature. So at any point, I can come over here and hit this swap button. It'll automatically change my trade from long to short. So if I come over here and I hit this swap trade button, it'll change my Doge long. It'll close out my long, take my profits, and instantly put me in at a short at whatever the current price is. All right, YouTube. So that's a wrap on my long versus shorting on Bybit. If you guys have any other questions, drop comments down below in the video and I'll be more than happy to make another tutorial for you guys. I appreciate you guys for stopping by the channel. Again, my name is Ryan Matta. Thank you guys for stopping by the channel. Peace.